dear audience, in the next few minutes, let me present my work with the aim to join to the united scientific effort to reduce the impact of COVID-19. I'm working in the Heimpal National Pediatric Institute, and at the COVID outpatient clinic, I have weekly experience with the children affected by the infection. My vision is a world which has established ground rules in fighting a pandemic. There are three perspectives that we consider remarkably important. Firstly, we investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic infections for understanding viral transmission patterns. Secondly, we investigate the effectiveness and safety of TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option. And lastly, we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 by conducting an analysis of our prospective cohort. Let's talk about my first project. We are investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. A few words about the background, but I'm pretty sure everybody is familiar, familiar with this topic. The symptoms of COVID-19 are similar in children and adults, but the frequency of the symptoms varies. Children are likely to have a higher proportion of asymptomatic infection than adults, therefore they have a key role in the transmission. Our aim is to investigate the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. We examined PCR-confirmed SARS-CoV-2 infection in children because our hypothesis is that the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 is higher in school age, 6 to 12 years of age children, than in other pediatric age groups. The systematic search was conducted in three databases. There were more than 18,000 records and we included 165 articles to the final analysis. Let me show our results. In our huge database, the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in children is 47%. This means almost half of the infected kids are asymptomatic in the normal population. And we examine the different age groups. The prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in school age children is striking. It is 64%. And the age, the age dependency of risk ratio also shows the same results. It, and it gives a spectacular representation of the age distribution of asymptomatic COVID-19. It clearly shows that the risk ratio increases over time and then decreases with a plateau between 5 and 10 years of age. We also examined the sex distributions, and the odds ratio is not significantly different from one in this population. Due to, uh, during the data extraction, we realized that due to the different PCR screening strategies and protocols, we have to create subgroups for the most accurate analysis. <laughs> Therefore, we created seven groups based on the different PCR screening strategies in addition to the normal population. And you can see the overall asymptomatic prevalence of each subgroups on this figure. Let me read your attention to the seventh group. With newborns from infected mothers, 69% of them were asymptomatic. And it's really important if we think of the high number and wide scale of post-COVID cases and symptoms. A few words about the strengths and limitations. Uh, our, we created the first meta-analysis in this topic with a huge number of articles and it gives the possibility for subgroup formations. And the different screening strategies and protocols were our main difficulties and li limitations in this analysis. As conclusion, we highlight that <coughs> half of all SARS-CoV-2 infected children are asymptomatic with the highest prevalence in the school age group. And it is possible to create uh, recommendations for targeted screening protocols, for example, in schools. Meanwhile, the regular forehead temperature measure could be ineffective and unnecessary there. It is, we also highlight that the importance of vaccination in children. And in the case of diversified symptoms and complaints, the history of asymptomatic COVID-19 should be considered. There is a need for further investigations of predisposing factors as well. Currently, I'm working on a manuscript with the final results. 
our title is two thirds of SARS-CoV-2 infected children, school age children are asymptomatic, a paradigm shift is needed in the protective strategy. With my second project, we are investigating the effectiveness of TNF-alpha inhibitors in COVID-19 therapy because studies found associations between the rising level of TNF-alpha and severe COVID-19 cases. Therefore, uh, it is uh, good uh, probably, probably it, it could be, uh, be it could be a good uh, way to uh, improve the care with these patients with the TNF-alpha. Our aim is to investigate the use of TNF-alpha inhibitors in COVID-19 therapy. We included a population with SARS-CoV-2 infection and we accepted a control group with standard of care without any administration of TNF-alpha inhibitors because our hypothesis is that the administration of TNF-alpha inhibitors associated with better clinical outcomes in patients with COVID-19. And we would like to reach an improvement in COVID-19 therapy. The systematic search was conducted in three databases and we are in the selection process now. And lastly, we perform a descriptive registry analysis, characterization of COVID-19 in Hungarian children, analysis of 517 prospectively collected patients' data. As I mentioned before, the, uh, there are a lot of gaps in our knowledge of COVID-19, especially in connection with children. Our aim is to create a descriptive analysis based on our unique cohort. There are more than 500 included children with everyday uh, data collection and uh, we also collected biological samples during the follow-ups as well. And I'm happy to announce that the one-year follow-up has, has also been completed, so now we're working on uh, analyzing the database. A short progress plan for the upcoming weeks with the registry analysis. And as conclusion, um, firstly, we're investigating the prevalence of asymptomatic COVID-19 in different pediatric age groups. We also investigate the effectiveness and safety of TNF-alpha inhibitors as a therapeutic option in severe COVID-19. And we could have a deeper understanding of COVID-19 with the registry analysis. Thank you for your attention. I chose a quote from Muhammad, from Muhammad Ali, don't count the days, make the days count. If you ha have any question, I'm happy to answer. I have one question about the sex uh, question of the COVID-19. Because uh, as I've seen, one study was with a really high weight. Yes. We, uh, I just wanted to see it once more because in this case, if this study is it's really big, um, wait in the, yes, yes, yes. We, we in this case, this I would not recommend to say that this is that kind of uh, wait for this yes. whole meta-analysis because it means that most of the effect is just from one study. Uh, That's we, what I advise. <laughs> we created, uh, we performed this analysis without this uh, study, and the odds ratio was the same. So, in this case, it's really nice. We, yes. We, I would yeah. recommend to highlight this. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Do you have specific plans with uh, the biological samples, and if so, what are your plans? From uh, DNA is isolated from the blood. So we can, uh, looking for rare genetic variants, um, which are predisposing for uh, infectious diseases, and um, from the serum and plasma, um, it is possible to looking for um, um, biological markers regarding to the inflammation, and from the saliva, it is possible to, to analyze um, antibodies, IgA, so, 
there are plans with, with these biological samples. We will discuss it. You are meaning that uh, with the, the saliva test, uh, different antibody tests, you were saying? No, uh, at this time, no. That, uh, um, we, uh, we, it's under, under discussion what we will uh, do with, with that uh, sample. Did you include studies who um, included patients already on anti-TNF alpha therapy or it was a newly involved therapy just because of COVID? Yes, um, in this analysis we only involve patients who get TNF alpha inhibitors for COVID-19. So we exclude everybody um, with rheumatic disease or or I did it uh, with, with TNF alpha inhibitors. Um, however, it is re really uh, interesting because there are studies and um, registries with um, re rheumatic, uh, with patients with rheumatic disease uh, with, who treated with TNF alpha inhibitors, and they concluded that being on a treatment with TNF alpha inhibitors associated. Um, with lower odds of hospitalization related to COVID-19. So it's really important, really, really interesting, but uh, at this point we are focused on patients without, with TNF-alpha inhibitors for COVID-19. Uh, are you planning to do, or did you do any subgroup analysis on the different strains of COVID and the the ratio of symptomatic uh, infection, because I, I'm also thinking about our project on, on what, what are we forecasting for the future? Like, what do we think will happen from September? Will be there another wave? Will it be similar or different? So did you do any analysis or planning to, or were able to do that? It's, it's a good advice and, and um uh, we will consider it, and thank you. I'm, I'm joined to this question because the last wave is uh, absolutely was different from the uh, first four waves. So, and the symptomatic, the ratio of the symptomatic children increased dramatically in uh, from October to February in this year. So, I, our question is that your meta-analysis, do you think? Is it valid now in 22 uh, on June, June or it's, it is absolutely different? Um, we included a huge amount of studies with, with, um, with um, not from one variant and we can, we can create subgroup analysis on, on them. Um, I think absolutely valid, it, valid if um, it is really important that we highlight the high number of asymptomatic patients and it... Okay, but you know that the latest publication, if I catched correctly, from 2021. Okay, yeah. so the, these publications will come out in 2022, on the second half. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs>